Hi, my name is Mike Roslog, and I'm the Senior Product Manager for Rad Studio, which includes Delphi. You know, one of the questions I often get asked is, how do you implement a unit test inside of Delphi? And I'm going to do a really quick application for you and hopefully show you how quick and easy you can do it. So let's get started. As you can see, I have Rad Studio 2010 with the Delphi personality loaded. I'm going to do a File New, and we're going to do a VCL Forms application. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drop down a button. So we'll put a label in here and I will take this, bring this across. And what we're going to do with this label really quickly is I'm just going to put into here and say answer is, answer is colon, and we'll hit enter. And then what I'm going to do is go into the code. Now I'm going to add a little bit of code into here. So I'm going to come into my public declaration and I'm going to say function. And then we're going to say, calc my two numbers. Okay, I'm going to put a comma b. We're going to make it integers. And then I'm going to return an integer. Okay, now once I've, um, once I have done this, I am going to put my semicolon on it. And I'm going to hit the control shift c to finish it out. And then I'm going to come into here, come up to the top and put a var in here. And we'll just say my a var colon integer. And we'll come down in here. My var colon equals a plus b semicolon. And then we'll just say result colon equals my var. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll go back into our design and we'll go into our button. And now we'll just say something like label one dot caption colon equals. And then we want to basically do an int to string, basically call the calculation number. So we're going to do a calc, my two numbers, and I'm going to pass in 12 comma 12. We'll put an end parentheses on it, semicolon. So now we have an application that's running. Everything looks great, so I'm going to go ahead and compile it. I'll hit the button and we'll see that it equals 24. Now let's go ahead and let's add the test to it. So how hard can it be? It's real easy, actually. Come in, say file new, and go to the other. Then go into your unit test section and add new project. Now it's going to come up and it's going to pick up that I'm in project one and that it's going to say it's project one test and do I want to add it to the project group that I'm currently working on? Yes, those things are all valid. So I want to say next. It's then going to ask me, do I want a GUI runner or do I want a console runner? I do want the GUI because I want to look at my values after I'm done. So I say finished. Now, notice over my project group, I have project one, which is what I'm working on, and I have the project test.exe. Now, what I need to do is add the test to it. So I say file, new, come into other, and this time I add a test case. When I do that, I get a representation of what unit I'm looking at testing. Since it's unit one, I have a button click in there, and I also have calc my two numbers. Now, I'm not looking at button click for this one. I'm going to go just simple with my calc two numbers, and I'm going to say next. I'm going to go ahead and use it as the base test class, so I could actually inherit test classes. But for this simple example, I'm just going to leave the defaults, and I'm going to say finished. Now, most of the code is generated for me automatically so I don't really have to do too much to get this to work now because I am making a form inside of this process I do have to add a nil because I'm not going to actually be interacting with the form I just want to go ahead and create a nil form into there and so that the form gets properly instantiated and then if you notice down in my test calculation I have my return value a and B are defined as integers because that's what the method took was two integers in there and it's going to return a return set. So all I have to do is come in here and add some code. So let's make A colon equals 12 semicolon, B colon equals 12. And now we've set it up. So now we know the return value is going to be 24. So I can come into here, and now that we know what the return value is, I could say check not, and we'll just say that, not equals. And it's looking for an integer string in 64 cardinal. It's looking for a variable type. And I'm going to say the uh, check not equals is 24, comma, and then I want that return value. Now this is a return value and I'm looking for not equals. Right now the way it's set up is I have it as equals. So I'm going to put a thing in here saying bad um, and I'm going to uh, say value 
should not equal. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do. I am done now with this with this uh, with this test at this point. So I can come into here and run this. And what it's going to do, it's going to kick off the test runner. There's my first tester. If I uh, click on it, you'll see that I have these things it's going to test. I hit the run button up here, and it's going to execute. Now notice my score, or my progress, was uh, zero because my test failed. And that was because I basically had a bad value inside of here. And you can see bad value, uh, sh value should not equal, expected and actuals were equal to 24. Now, if I come back into my code, I could make this and change this to 25, which means my return value is not going to be equal. And if I come into it, you'll see that when I run it this time, that it's going to be successful because it did do it. Did, it went through it. Now, what I might want to also do because it was successful, I might want to update something. So I could come out here and say status, and then just come in here and say uh, success. Okay. And then we can go ahead, uh, put a semicolon on it, hit run again, because it didn't fail. We can go ahead and say, run it again, and it'll say success inside of here. Notice down here we passed, we have a pass inside of here, and we have a success down at the bottom. So again, a lot of these things you can do. Now again, I could come into here, let's say I wanted to do a positive test instead of a negative test. So I could come into here and say check equal and come into here and say check equals and then I could say 24 24 comma return value and then I could also then put in my um, process which my uh, status which says uh, values match and then plus uh, place and put a plus in here and then I can say int to string return value okay so we can just put the return value in there, close out our semicolon, and now we have that same thing. And now this is going to be also successful. So I can come into here, run it. It's going to execute it. When I run my uh, process, it'll come down here and say, yes, we did pass, and it was a success. Now, if I would change the value to 25, which now it's bad, so it's only going to give me this, um, so it should be values don't match, now I can come into here and run this again, and when I run it, and this time it's going to uh, fail, okay, I'm going to come in here and run it, and this time it's going to fail, uh, it will come back through here and notice that we've got the failure here. Notice that the status did not come through on that one, and it's because my values did not match. It was 25, but it was 24. It was expecting 25 got 24 so the values did not match and so that's what we were looking at from that standpoint so it's very easy to basically look at how this can be done now another thing you can do just really quickly is that you can come into here let's go ahead and get rid of the status bar right here let's go ahead and get rid of this I could do a whole bunch of testing and then at the end of it I could raise basically an assert to let me know that there's a problem so I could come into this process and I could say assert and then inside of here I'm going to say false and then come into here and say too bad okay and we'll just put a semicolon on there like that and then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and as you'll see when it runs we'll say run boom we get the exception the assertion failure and then we'll say continue and then we'll come out here and we'll notice that we had an assertion failed and it basically comes in here and tells me that I had an assertion failed and I can put other things into there. So that right there shows you how quickly and easily you can add unit testing to your code. It should be fairly straightforward. Point it to it, add a new test project, add a new test case, start writing your test cases. Hopefully this was fun and enjoyable. Thanks a lot for listening. Have a great day and we'll see you soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.